when I was growing up, late 1960s, early 1970s, I am a child, the offspring of the civil rights era. Malcolm X daughters is my age. Dr. King's children are my age. We are the children of the civil rights era and I feel shame I feel embarrassment because we who are their children we have not progress we have not accomplished we have not added nothing to the struggle just live off the benefits of those our elders our parents I feel shame to be part of failure it is not entirely our fault but then again, it is because that momentum that our forefathers, our fathers, our parents, the momentum that they had because we were giving a few nickel and dimes and crumbs, we went passive, we went docile. When I was growing up, you were taught, for me, it was just natural to respect your elders. It was just natural. I, I even had respect for children who were a little older than me. I was in grade school. They were in high school. We was taught or we just mimic and knew to call people Mr. Johnson, Mrs. Johnson, yes ma'am, no ma'am. When adults was talking, you shut your mouth, be quiet. Adults talking. That's how. Many of us was raised. When adults talk, you be quiet. Matter of fact, most times, you need to leave the room. One day, we will become them. We will become elders. <laughs> What's funny? Is some of us may view Dr. King and Malcolm X as an elder, but we forget these men, they were killed at 39 years old. They were in their 20s. Ooh. They were in their 20s when. They were active, trying to do something to stop our oppression, to make our lives, those who live in 2022, try to do something to make our life better. And the fight was not over in 1960 or 70. We, the children of the civil rights era, something happened, maybe something they didn't do because we were too young. We wouldn't become of age until 
uh, uh, the 80s. <clears throat> Nevertheless, the ball was dropped. I feel bad. So I decided, even when I was a child, I wouldn't bring children into this mess. And I stuck to my guns. But many of you have brought children into this mess. And you, you've done nothing to help their future like your future was made better. And we should feel shame. We become elders whether we have children or not. But I would think if you had children, you would have more concern. And it is more important for you to do whatever you can to make their future better. An elder is a leader whether we like it or not. The first leader that we have is our parents, our mother and our father. We cannot avoid leadership. A lot of us, we want to blame others. Well, look what Dr. King did and Rosa Parks and Medgar Evers and Huey P. Newton, look, no. Everyone in the tribe is leadership. When you look in the natural world, especially among social animals, whenever the main or the dominant male or female, if something happens to them, then somebody must step up and know what to do. They are responsible for the tribe. They are responsible for the family. So a young boy feels great responsibility if something happens to his father. He knows I'm man of the house. The thing about leadership is we are human, we are people, and we are not perfect. So we cannot be judged, but we must honor the sincerity of the heart. And all these persons here, those who are known and unknown, I have to honor because of the sincerity of the heart. I understand. Now we are in their footsteps. We are, we've put on their boots. And many of you criticize and you have a lot of nasty things to say about our elders. What are you going to do? I mean, we haven't done anything since the civil rights era, so you already messed up as is. You've and myself, we've accomplished no more than what the slaves did fresh off the slave plantation. And you are in a better position, which makes us look truly, <laughs> truly, truly pathetic. You hollering, you screaming, you talk big, bad, and bold. Who do you impress? Nobody is impressed. But again, leadership, just because you are an older person does not mean that you are void of mistakes and errors. Now, if you look at the Bible, the story of, of Moses and they were led into the wilderness and correct me if I'm wrong, but 
they were lost in the wilderness for 40 years because of the elders. They could not move forward until the elders died off. When you look at the 1960s, who were the ones who was fueling that fire called the Black Revolution? It was the young people. Whenever you look at oppression, whenever you look at injustice, from the streets and from the colleges, regardless of your race, because you saw the same thing among white society or Caucasian society, from the streets and from the colleges, the young people they began to rise up and challenge the powers that be. The elders, many of them are filled with fear and they want to play it safe. The young people are filled with fire. I'm sick of it. Let's get this done. But they don't have any experience and don't really understand. And they have no example. They don't know what or who they're dealing with. And so the same way that the Black Revolution, the Civil Rights era, the same way it rose, it fell, and it still has fallen. A bunch of talkers, personality seekers, praise seekers on YouTube, the struggle has turned into reality television. <clears throat> so in my conclusion, what I want to say real quick, you have Angel Snub Nub 7. I'm an elder now. Unlike Dr. King, unlike Malcolm and so many of our ancestors, I have life experience and I've been through these things. And I'm here to tell the young people how they should go. But again, unlike myself, you don't really listen to your elders unless they are saying something that you like. Something that make you feel good. You follow the elders who lost the fight. They lost. They did not win. So this means that you need a new strategy, a new mindset. You can't keep doing what your elders done. And then these same elders, they egg you on because... They think they can win through you. They want to live through you. This false belief that what we have been doing for a hundred years, it will eventually win. <laughs> but a hundred years clearly tells us that's not going to happen. So you ignore Angel Snutton Up 7. You ignore people like Angel Snuffin' Up 7. And you wonder why you cannot progress. And then you laugh at Dr. King. I have a dream. And you do the same thing. You have a dream. That your pro-blackity-black, pan-African, blackity-black, Hebrew is like comedic, whatever it is. It's going to win one day. Mm, mm, mm. I have a dream one day. <laughs> Just as nightmarish. <laughs>